line in verse 3, it says, Trust in the Lord and do good. And we really went deep there because that's not always easy. That's not always easy to have a complete trust in the Lord and do good in our life. And we picked up the, the series um, title, Fight the Good Fight through the Apostle Paul, because that's what he understood. We need to trust God and do good in our lives. And it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a task for us to really keep that at the forefront of our mind, be the priority of our life, and then act on it and do good. He said that I have fought the good fight. That's what the way Apostle Paul put it. He said, I've kept the faith. And we looked at that last week, that fighting the good fight is a fight of faith. It is keeping the faith. Keeping our life, like I said, our life's focus on God. But faith, we looked at it at the end of last week. We said it's truth. It's our belief system. It's what we know about Jesus. It's what we know about our Heavenly Father and how He has acted on our behalf. So that truth is there for us as we live by faith and then we act on the truth. The Bible tells us a very dangerous thing to do is to say you have faith and no actions. We follow what we know. We follow and respond to that great truth in our heart because we understand what God's done for us and we want to respond to that with action. And then at the end of last week we said we've got to have vision. Having faith and living by faith, that's having a vision for our life that perseveres and goes through some things. It grows and it transforms us and we don't give up. Because we said last week, we talked about that thing that's so hard to consider that ultimately there's judgment at the end of our lives. Did we fight the good fight of faith? Did we keep the faith? Did we live by faith, responding to God? So we want to look at that and continue to fight the good fight. So when we look back at verse 3 there in Psalm 37, it says, Trust in the Lord and do good. That's last week. This week, dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. There in verse 3 of Psalm 37. Dwelling in the land. This is something that that perseverance and that vision is going to allow us to do. Is to keep our, our, our stand and continue to dwell where we should and not be moved. There is a battle of epic proportion we talked about over our lives and our eternal destiny, amen? And if we don't stand fast, if we don't don't dwell in the land that we're supposed to, if we give up our position, we're being defeated. And it's the reality of who we are as Christians, that we need to dwell in the land of God's goodness. In the Old Testament, the, the picture of the promised land is for every one of us. There's a place in God that we can go and travel to, and then we're going to have to battle for it. We're going to have to go through some things. We're going to have to walk by faith. But if we will do that in that promised land, it's overflowing with milk and honey. And that's kind of where a lot of these other uh, scriptures go because it says if we do these things, He's going to give us the desires of our heart. And what's the desire of your heart this morning? Prayerfully, it's trusting God and doing good. That's the main desire. And then that way, we take a stance in our faith life. We fight the faith. We fight the good fight. And we take the position in the kingdom that we should And it says, feed on His faithfulness. Feed on His faithfulness. This means to receive the vital strength and nourishment that we need. The power to live in His authority. Amen. So when we, we really look at feeding on His faithfulness, understanding who He is, we've taken a position 
in the kingdom of God and now our, our, our substance, our, our, our nourishment is coming from the kingdom. And this is where things get lopsided for many, many people. They want to come into the kingdom, but the world's their source. And we really talked about that quite a bit last week, that the truth of God has to be our source. We have to act on it and keep the vision. That's dwelling in the land. But when we look at feeding on the faithfulness of God, that is where we continually to experience God. And I was sharing with someone the other day, I said, you know, so many people know rich things in the Bible and it, it, it's, it's a truth that they grasp on an inner, intellectual level, but their experience spiritually is very lacking. Now it's one thing to talk about the joy of the Lord being your strength, it's another thing for the joy of the Lord to be your strength. It's one thing to say that there's a peace that is beyond understanding. It's another thing for that to be your experience. That there's a peace that goes way past the circumstances of life. Way past our feelings. Way past our emotions. Way past whether people are accepting of us or agree with us. Amen. There's a lot of people that walk in an absence of peace because of their circumstances. But when you can live in peace no matter your circumstance, that is a wonderful spiritual place. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about feeding on His faithfulness. That we, the reality of the Word is happening in our lives. But boy, there's a fight to fight, isn't there? That's something that we have to really strive to Make sure it's our experience. And we make sure that we are dwelling where we should and feeding on His faithfulness or we find ourselves preoccupied with things that are distracting us or getting knowledge and encouragement from things that are not of God, that are very temporal. We're looking at success. We're looking at the influence of this world. Uh, maybe... Um, um, just, just power and fame or, or, or some type of position in life that we're striving for that really is just very vain and temporal. Feeding on the faithfulness of God. We have to stand and we have to feed on what God wants us to experience and understand. Ephesians, the Apostle Paul says this, Ephesians 10 talking about the war that we're in, fighting the good fight. Ephesians 6 verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And this has been preached on relentlessly through the ages because it's where we all find ourselves in a spiritual battle. We're not wrestling flesh and blood. We're wrestling against things that are heavenly and spiritual in nature that are very dark and wicked. It is the truth of our existence and it's not easy to understand, it's not easy to war against, but he gives us an instruction in verse 11, in verse 11 there he tells us to stand against the devil. He says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against against the wiles, that's the schemes, the tactics, the things that, the fiery darts that he's throwing at you, all of those things of the devil. So today I want us to look at that, stand against the devil. We are in a war, we are fighting the, the good fight because we have to stand against the devil. That is part of it. We looked last week 
and we pretty much said we don't stand a chance to really fight the fight unless we have real faith. But we, when we know we have real faith, it tells us to stand against the devil. We have an enemy. We live in a world that's cursed. We live under the curse of sin and death, disease and affliction and hurt and pain and offense and all of these things that the curse brought into our life. How do we stand against it? And like I said, volumes and volumes have been taught about spiritual warfare. And we're going to talk about that to a degree But I want you to understand that when he talks about this standing against the devil, he's really talking about dwelling in God's land and feeding on the faithfulness of God. Now a lot of times we want to take authority and we want to rebuke and we want to do warfare and I'm not saying that any of that is wrong. But if we are not really dwelling and feeding on the goodness and faithfulness of God, are we, war, are we even in a position to war? Are we even where we need to be before we can say, under my feet in the name of Jesus Christ, mountain be removed, enemy be rebuked, amen? Because if my life is not a life of truth, action, and vision, how much faith am I really speaking? How much authority is really in my life if I'm not living in the land, if I'm not really a kingdom-minded person and I am feeding on the faithfulness of God, I want that place of presence and anointing. Come on. That place of presence and anointing in my life. And you talk about stand against the devil. You talk about really fighting a good fight when the presence and anointing of God is in my life so that my words have power, amen, so that the vision carries me through. The Holy Spirit is allowed to speak. The Holy Spirit is allowed to move me where I need to be. But if I am a place where my faith is teetering, what does the Bible say about those prayers that are double-minded? They're not answered. They're not going to avail us the things that we want to see. So when we look at standing against the devil, we look at putting on the armor of God to fight these hosts of wickedness in heavenly places, it says, we'll have done all to stand. All to stand. And this is where I find myself lacking many times. This is where I find myself um, uh, a bit discouraged because there's, there, there's, a, there's a weakness within Scott. <clears throat> there's a limitation in my mind. I don't understand uh, all spiritual things the way I should, amen? But if I don't dwell in God and faithfully feed on God, I'm out here rationally trying to figure things out. And look what he says here in verses um, 14 through 17 because when we, when we talk about having done all to stand fighting against the devil that makes it a personal thing that makes her a personal accountability and so many people want to believe that, that, the, 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 that the grace that was brought through the cross of Calvary is somehow automatically going to take care of every affliction, take care of every stress and strain. It affords you to live in the land where when you feed on the faithfulness, those tools are available to you. But without the personal accountability, having done all to stand, can I expect the reality of me winning the spiritual warfare without action and vision? Come on. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about frustration of Christianity when the promises of God do not become my reality. When I do not see the, 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 the battle being waged, when I do not feel the comfort of the Holy Spirit, when I do not feel like God is speaking to me and counseling me with the direction and the wisdom and the, and the power that I need, But it can't be just a Hail Mary prayer all the time, amen, in my spiritual warfare. He tells me 
to stand, having done all to stand. Having done all to stand. And he tells us exactly what that is. A lot of time we want to just go into that spiritual warfare and, and you know, we, we think about spiritual warfare like we think about movies where we've seen, um, you know, gladiators and we've seen all these incredible things because when we talk about spiritual warfare, we're talking about the armor of God and that was um, really drawn from the warriors and the, and, the, and the protective things that those warriors had on. So we automatically kind of go there and we think that, that we are on a personal level, level vanquishing the devil ourselves. That we have come to this place where we are in such spiritual authority and high-mindedness that the devil doesn't stand a chance against us. But that's not real, really what we see in my opinion, when we go into the next verses, in verse 14 through 17, he says, Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth. He didn't say do a thousand push-ups. He said get truth. And when he talks about gird, that means to put it on tight. There not to be any slack. And there's way too much slack in people's doctrines anymore, in their convictions, in their theology, amen. That maybe this could go, maybe that could go, I mean, that, that, that somehow there's a hundred roads that lead to the same place. But when he talks about girding with the truth, he's talking about knowing what you know and staying fast on that. That's a big thing. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the word of the Spirit, which is the word of God. We looked at the belt of truth right there, and we, we, we see that in that place in Christ, when we take that position to, to um, dwell in Him in the land and feed on His faithfulness, that that truth is going to give us a strength we do not possess. You know, weightlifters and stuff, they put on that big belt because there's support in that big belt for them to lift more than they could. We need the support of God's Word. We need that to be the foundation of who we are. And we're going to come to another place where we apply particular words, where we really are in the Scripture, but the, the foundational truth of that belt that is supporting us is just we are in Christ without the slack of, uh, of doubt, without the slack of unbelief in our life, that we've girded ourselves taking that slack out and walking in that truth. The next thing he talks about, the breastplate of righteousness. That's right living. What does the breastplate protect? The heart. The heart is a big deal, isn't it? But the Bible tells us if we're not careful, our hearts are forever wicked and against God. So I need the righteousness of Jesus Christ. In right living, I need to protect my heart. I need to make sure that I'm not just living any old way. That there's a right standing before my Lord and Savior. That's where I'm going to fight at best, my friends. That's where I'm going to be protected. That's where I'm doing all to stand on truth, my heart protected with the righteousness of God, and the gospel of peace, our feet shod with the gospel of peace. That best being people that are ready to apply the gospel. We're ready to, to, to be people of peace. We are not people that find ourselves just so conflicted and confrontational. We're, we're not people that are, 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 are shying away from helping people. We are prepared to work the gospel in our life, uh, to speak the gospel, to live out the gospel. Blessed are the peacemakers. 
Now that's not an easy thing, especially for us in our modern times where we believe that we should be heard and we are justified to have a righteous indignation. Well, people have taken righteous indignation way too far. They're grumpy. They're hard to deal with. They're a bad representative of what love looks like. It's one thing to speak truth and try to bring some truth and, and some um, sensibility into a, a confrontational area. It's another thing just to complain about it. It's one thing to be an agent of love and change and, and really um, sow the peace, really bring the peace of the gospel into a situation. And there, there's a big difference there. Can I bring the peace of God if I don't possess the peace of God? That's powerful. So before I can actually war spiritually, this needs to be the reality of who I am. This needs to be a place of maturity in the Lord, that there's a peace in my life. The gospel has had an effect that I can go into a place and it be changed because there's a peace and a love. The presence of the Lord because I'm dwelling in Him and feasting on Him. Feasting on His faithfulness. I'm dwelling there. I'm receiving the nourishment that I need and these things are a practical part of my spiritual life. It's not easy. It's not easy being at peace with your enemies. It's not easy being at peace with your past. It's not easy being at peace with your future sometimes. Because sometimes God's showing you a place to go that you're not crazy about. It's called dying to self. It's called surrender. It's called living by faith. When we actually do what God calls us to do. There's a lot of things in our life that are conflicting unless we settle it with the Lord. Isn't it true? The shield of faith. He says, above all, take the shield of faith. Why is it an above all thing? It's impossible to please God without. You must first believe that God is God and that He's a what? Rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. I pray that's what we're doing this morning. We're diligently seeking Him with this truth. We're diligently belting up with truth. We're taking the slack out of our life. If, we've, if we find ourselves not doing a great job at fighting spiritually, amen, it's because we're not dwelling very well and we're not feeding on His faithfulness, amen. The power and the presence of God is not radiating through our life with an anointed presence that these things are being defeated. These things are actually happening. So he says, take that shield of faith so that you can quench the fiery darts of the enemy. That's those schemes. That's those wiles of the devil. He's after us, guys. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Sin is progressive. He wants to steal enough till he can kill something. Amen. He wants to kill something until he can destroy you. Amen. That is progressive. And if we're not careful, we allow these little schemes to continue to bring death into certain places of our life and we live in a place of bondage and strongholds because we don't react by faith. We don't take the authority over these things, dwelling in the land of God, feeding on the faithfulness of God and speaking to that thing by faith, amen, having done all to stand. Having done all to stand. And I wish I could tell you that I don't have any uh, places in my life that are, are not 100%. That I've taken over the land and I possess the land and every area where my mind's involved, where my actions are involved, where my deeds and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're at work on those things prayerfully. There's doctrines out there that say if you're really saved, you should be perfect in all those things. I think Paul said, there's some things I'm doing that I really don't want to do. There's sin in my flesh that I'm still having to deal with. But if I'm standing and warring, that's getting better. 
Why? Because I dwell with God and I feed on His faithfulness. I feed on Him and I take up that whole armor that I'm able, that I'm able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The helmet of salvation. Your head is as important as your heart, isn't it? So they put a helmet that encompassed their whole head, their brain. You know how important your mind is? Your mind is incredibly important because spiritually it's attached to your heart. But the salvation that we are the king's kid, when we really think about being royalty, when we think about being the children of God that we are, boy, shouldn't that just increase our faith? Shouldn't that bring us to a place of faithfulness and worship and praise? So that it doesn't matter what that co-worker said. It doesn't matter that, that that happened at the job. It just really doesn't matter. I'm saved. This is temporal. It doesn't matter if the bills keep coming. I'm saved. I'm a child of the King. It doesn't matter if everybody gets it and understands why I'm so enthusiastic and faithful. It doesn't matter whether they say things that are unkind or unreasonable to me because I am a saved individual. That is the most important issue issue and it is mine amen how how much uh, more um, assurity do we have in our life than that helmet of salvation it's like that truth huh like you just buckle up that truth and say all right i'm ready for the day i'm saved i'm god's i know who i am i'm dwelling in the land and then he says take the sword of the spirit Take the sword of the Spirit, now the Word of God. Do you know the Word so when the battle is waged in your mind, when that person comes against you, do you know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper? Do you know that? And there's some major things that the enemy can throw at us. Life's going to throw a lot at us. The struggle within us is going to be a big, big deal. But yes, the enemy himself is going to use people. He's going to use circumstances in your life to just war and bombard you. Do you know what to say to that in the Word of God? Do you know that I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength? But am I just going to quote that and that not really be my reality? Can I just really quote a scripture when I'm not dwelling in His land? When I really am not girded in His truth? When I don't feed on His faithfulness? I'm not someone that, that, that has a lifestyle of worship and surrender and a heart towards the things of God. Is my prayer a prayer of desperation to get me out of an uncomfortable spot? Or can I pray that God, you're doing something big right here. You're changing me and you're going to change this circumstance. I know that you are supernatural. I know you are powerful. You've taken me from glory to glory before and you're going to take me from glory to glory in this situation. It's just, it's just so powerful when we talk about spiritual warfare. So many people want to reduce spiritual warfare to a place where if I pray once in the morning that I'm going to symbolically put all these things on that somehow everything's going to go right for me today. And we can pray that we're putting those things on, but then you better live by faith that they're on. Somebody said, told me one time, and, 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 and if that's the, the way you work, this is not a, a slight against you, but I mean, it just made sense to me to leave the armor on. Some people said, you know, I, I pray every day to put the armor on. Man, when I heard about this, I put it on, never took it off. Now, I get in the flesh. I get into doubt and fear and anxiety where I'm not dwelling in my inheritance, where I'm not feeding on His faithfulness. And what's that going to do? It's going to let me down. It's going to let me down. It's going to be a place of discouragement. It's going to be a season of loss in my life. And we have too many of those as Christians many times. Season of loss. We've gained a bunch of ground and we've come against some incredible um, struggles and strongholds and devils, if you will, uh, because a lot of that's out there, but 
you know, then we say, okay, now I'm 40. Now I'm tired. Now, what did we say? And then we're not feeding on the faithfulness of God. And we're just kind of living our everyday life. And before long, this wile, this tactic, this scheme starts coming into my life because I'm not where I should be in that anointed place, in God's presence. These things of armor are us in Him. These places of armor, these things that we put on, is what we're doing, is intentionally saying, I am going to be in a strong place personal relationship. I'm going to live that Spirit-filled, Spirit-led life. The Holy Spirit in me. The hope of glory. Amen. Isn't that fantastic? Christ in me. The Spirit of Christ. The Spirit of the risen Christ dwells in us, right? The hope of glory. How about the hope of victory? The hope of victory, the hope of my inheritance, the hope of me feasting faithfully and dwelling in the land that is flowing with milk and honey in my life where joy and peace and love and gentleness and faithfulness and kindness, patience and faithfulness and self-control, where those things are my reality. How does that happen? When I'm in Him. The armor is telling us how to live in in Him, in His strength, in His power, in that anointed place. We call it the Spirit-filled life. We call it the Spirit-led life. It quenches the fiery darts, friends. It quenches them. We don't have to, we, we, we don't have to hope and wish hard enough that somehow the devil's defeated. The devil's defeated. Oh, mercy. That kind of... A, We don't have to wish and hope hard enough that the devil's defeated. The devil is defeated. Where do you live your life in that place of battle against a defeated foe? Are we letting him up? Are we letting him have some power in this area or that area? It's just a lie. He's the father of lies. He's the accuser of the brethren. Are we believing something that we shouldn't? Is there a a false um, expectation appearing real in our life? That's a fear. Is there a false expectation appearing real in my life that needs to be replaced by a truth? That's because I'm going to dwell in the land that that fear is not going to control me. I'm going to feast on the faithfulness of God and I'm not going to let the world's cycles and cycles of discouragement and overwhelming pressure dictate to me how to feel, how to live, how to think. I'm not going to let them dictate my faith. Because if you're thinking, if your feelings are dictated, your faith's being dictated. But when truth dictates your faith and your faith moves forward, now you're taking the authority of Jesus Christ into every area of your life. You're doing warfare. You're standing against the wiles of the devil. It's not this, um, we're not in the middle of a gladiator movie. We're not in this place where we think we just have to be some super strong, mythical, spiritual beings that somehow we're going to beat this devil. He's already been beaten. We just have to walk in the goodness of God, in the love of God, in the peace of God. Look at what he says in verse 18. And I hate to, well, no, I don't hate to. I pray I brought clarity into what spiritual battle is. Spiritual battle, many, many times we felt like it's on our duty, it's our responsibility to muster up enough faith, to muster up enough strength, to muster up enough um, conquering stamina that we can beat the devil. We didn't beat the devil. We just have to walk in the authority of Christ. How do you walk in the authority of Christ? You walk in relationship with Him. In His Word, in His joy, in His peace, amen. Protecting your heart, living a righteous life by truth. 
by the Word of God. Verse 18, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Praying in agreement to what the Spirit of God wants. And it's okay if what you're praying, if it's not in agreement with the Spirit, that the Spirit show you what you need to be praying. This is where a lot of peace and satisfaction in life, a lot of times we find ourselves praying with an idol in our heart. Praying for what I want, not praying for what God wants. James says if I'll pray for what God wants, I know He'll hear me. And I'll have the petitions that I prayed for. But many times I'm praying for what I want, not what God wants. It says pray with supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all what? Perseverance. Perseverance. Back to that. Do we have to have perseverance? This is a key to fighting. This is a key to the vision for your life, for you to understand that I can't let up walking in the Spirit. I can't let up studying the Word of God. I can't let up being girded in truth. I can't let up living a righteous life. I can't let up being a peacemaker. I can't let up about thinking about how good salvation is and letting that motivate me. I can't let up from speaking the Word of God. Amen. I've got to do these things with perseverance and supplication for all the saints. He says you've got to just keep moving. You've got to keep taking it... um, to the next day, to the next season of your life, to the next battle. Because some of us are really, really fighting some severe battles. I know I am. I know that there, there, there's um, places in my life, I would really rather there be an easy button. I mean, there's just something in me that's where I'm ready to coast. <laughs> I'm like, man, do I have to keep going uphill forever? It's a battle. It's a war. The devil's relentless. He'd love for you to say, yeah, I think I'm just going to coast. I'm going to do it the easy way. I'm not going to push myself anymore. I'm not going to try anymore. I'm not going to butt into other people's business. I'm not going to worry about being a light. I'm not going to worry about surrendering. I'm not going to worry about serving. I'm not going to worry about being transformed anymore. I've come this far. I'm saved. I'm going to go to heaven one day. Boy, if you'll buy into that thought pattern right there, you are not dwelling in the land and feasting on the faithfulness of God the way He wants you to. Before long, you'll be open to so many wiles of the devil. You'll be compromising. You'll be letting up. And you'll find yourself discouraged and overwhelmed because you are not walking in the power and presence of God in the anointed place He wants you to be. Too many people lose ground. Too many people lose in the spiritual realm, if you will, because those powers of wickedness in heavenly places, they are relentless. They want you to give up. They don't want you to fulfill your destiny. They don't want you to walk in in victory over pornography and drugs and depression and hatred. They don't want you to walk in victory. They want you to let up and quit depending on God for victory in your life so you can just come back and be bound again. Galatians says, don't let the sin which you walked away from come back and easily ensnare you again. If you're not fighting the good fight, my friend, you're losing the fight in an area or two or more. One of the hardest things about pastoring is seeing people come and go. Hardest thing about being faithful to church, isn't it? Seeing people come and go. You ever seen them come in and get all patched up and dwell in the richness of God and so so encouraged to be in the things of God, feeding faithfully on the truth and the goodness of God and then run back. The Bible talks like a dog running back to its vomit. And before long, their state that they're in is worse than the original state. What happened? The spiritual battle was lost. 
the enemy comes rushing back in. Rushing back in. There's no standing still. There's no, there's no place for apathy in the Christian life, my friends. And my flesh dwells with that. Well, I wish there would be a cruising place. I wish there would be a place where I don't, don't have to push myself. Or a place where I don't have to surrender and I don't have to die to self. Am I speaking truth to you? Yes. Are you fighting the good fight? Because if you're fighting the good fight, you're moving in that place of battle. You're moving in that place where you are standing against the devil. And that is the full gospel message. That when you stand against the devil, you start receiving healing in your life. You start receiving deliverance in your life. You start to walk in the power and the authority of God. Amen. And you're taking back the land that was lost at times in your life. The enemy has to give it back. If you'll war against Him, if you'll dwell in that anointed place with the Father, amen, feeding on His faithfulness, before long, that territory that was lost to the enemy, whether it be addiction, defeat, whether it be confusion or strife, amen, whatever it might be, He's got to give it back. That's Word, isn't it? But we've got to go into the battle. And not just assume the battle as one prayer. Not assume the battle as a special recipe for putting on some armor. And not really realizing that this very armor is closeness to God. Living in the presence of God. Super duper, isn't it? Did I tell you we win? Yes. What are you ready to win? What are you ready to win? What are you ready to win? Control over your mind. Control over your body. Control over your future. Get over the past. It just has to be a place where you stand in the authority and the land of God and then feed on the faithfulness of God. Applying the Word of God. Replace the lie with the truth. Replace the accusation with the truth of God's Word. Fight the good fight. Get those, those fiery darts off of you with that shield of faith. What's that shield of faith look like? It looks like doing it. <laughs> it looks like doing it, my friend. I, I've given up a laundry list of things. And it looks like just really doing it. If you want to quit doing something, quit doing it. Start now. Start now doing it. If you don't want to talk that way anymore, quit doing it. By faith in the name of Jesus. If you don't want to drink it anymore, don't drink it. If you don't want to eat it anymore, don't eat it. If you don't want to look at it on the computer, don't look at it on the computer anymore. Start walking by faith. Start dwelling in the land where God wants you to dwell. And feed on His faithfulness. Because I know every time I wanted to take a, a puff, every time I wanted to drink it, every time I wanted to look at it, every time I wanted to go around it, there was something in me that was so incredibly strong that it just created a war in me. And I had to say, Jesus, you're bigger. Jesus, I love you more than I love that. Jesus, continue to help me. Jesus, I can't do it on my own. Jesus, this is so frustrating and hard. I just don't know why it's so unmanageable. I don't know why I let it go that far. But this is not who I am. I am your child, amen. I'm victorious and I am. you are worthy of the praise. You're worthy of righteous living. Put on the breast plate of righteousness so much of us don't want to dwell in the land because we're condemned with our own actions because the enemy has had a heyday the enemy's just had a heyday I'm so addicted so defeated and if I'm not careful I'll find myself living in the land of regret that's not who I am why would I go back to regret why would I go back to thinking I'm not enough? Why would I go back to a place of pity me? And that's exactly what we find ourselves doing if we're not careful. 
I stepped out of the land of pity. I stepped out of the land of regret. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I can go forward in my life. My life counts. My life matters. My life glorifies God. It's not useless and worthless and who, who cares about me or any of that. It doesn't matter if anybody on this earth cares about me. My Father does. But people on this earth care about you too. It's called the body of Christ. It's called people to encourage you and walk it out with you. Pray for you. Tell you you can when you don't feel like you can. Oh, it's so powerful. So a lot of the spiritual battle is me believing by faith that greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. The devil is defeated. Stand against the devil but don't give him any more authority don't build him up he's defeated i mean alcohol or drugs or porn or all of that that's a tool that is something that's playing on your mind it's playing in your emotions it's playing deep within your lust and it's the devil that's just twisting the screws if the devil's defeated, he doesn't get to twist the screws anymore if you take authority over it. And if you can't be alone with a computer, don't go in your room alone with a computer. If you can't be around those people without doing whatever they're doing, don't go around them. Even AA and NA will tell you you have to change your people, places, and things. And that's secular thinking. But they've seen that so much of that is true. If you're having a tough time with discouragement and fear and anxiety, do not talk to negative Nancy on the phone tomorrow for a half hour. If you're trying to get delivered from just, just, just not being a peaceful person, don't talk to people that are chaotic. It's a big deal. Some of it we're just running to. Let me, let me give you one little nugget before we go. <clears throat> a stronghold has something that has me bound. The Bible talks about strongholds. Those are things that the enemy through my past, of the, the way I talk, the way I act, the enemy's got my number. Okay? So he manipulates what he already knows about me. You know what a stronghold is? That's the thing I make an excuse to keep. It's one thing to be bound. It's another thing to make an excuse. Well, I've always been this way. My mom and daddy were like this. Come on. I've tried quitting, but I, you know, it's not that bad. I, that's probably the favorite stronghold thing. It's not that bad. It's not that good if you have to say it's not that bad. Come on. Righteousness. Truth. Life of peace, ready to go in peace, ready to be that person. Helmet of salvation. Amen. And then the sword of the Spirit. Speak that word when that devil comes up, when that overwhelming feeling comes up, when that addiction or that lie wants to raise its head and draw you back in. Speak to it and tell it what it is. You're a plan of the devil. I'm taking authority over you. You fill in the blank. I'm taking authority. Speak to it. Speak to your mountain and it shall be what? Removed. Removed. If you believe when you pray these things, you shall what? Receive. 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 <clears throat> I rebuked a thousand demons a thousand times. <laughs> and just when I thought I just wasn't ever going to get there, breakthrough happened so many times. Fight the good fight. Stand against the devil. Amen? Amen? Father, we thank you. We thank you this morning that there's victory in your name. There's victory in relationship and closeness in that anointed place. Being spirit-filled and spirit-led, Lord. May we dwell in you richly and feed on your faithfulness. That is the key to the good fight. That is the key to living faithfully. That is the key 
to resisting the devil. So Lord, be glorified in our lives. Continue to transform us. Continue to change us. There's nothing too hard for you. And we can do all things through Christ that gives us strength. So Lord, let your church stand victorious. Let the the people of God proclaim the victory over death, hell and the grave, over sin, over despair, over disease, over anything that holds us back Because the devil has been defeated on Calvary's cross. We love you, Jesus. And we give you praise and thanks for every bondage and stronghold that's been defeated and the ones that you will continue to bring victory in our lives over. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Enjoy your day. Come out at 530 if you want to study a little prophecy.